Today I am experimenting with backing up data onto a microcassette using a method so unreliable I doubt anyone would seriously attempt this. Microcassettes, the smaller cousin of the more common compact cassette. For many decades, their main use was in dictation machines. Until one day, when these were replaced with solid state recorders. Shall we play a game? These were then in turn replaced in even less time by an app. Microcassettes did try to gain some additional uses. One of those was as a stereo music format. Using metal formula microcassette tape to improve sound quality, only one stereo deck was ever released. Imagine the tiny Walkman that could have been. The format failed and microcassettes remained mono for the rest of their life. Another slightly more successful use for microcassettes was as a data storage medium. In the early to mid 1980s, compact cassettes were widely used on home computers for data storage. Attempts were made to do the same with microcassettes. Several manufacturers of small computers, such as Sharp, Epson, and Casio, all made small portable computers which used microcassettes to hold programs. My aim here is to recreate the use of a microcassette as a data storage container. First, let's look back to the early 1980s at a movie called War Games. The movie is about a hacker called David Lightman. In one scene, David escapes a locked room using a microcassette dictation recorder to record the door code. He then plays the recorded DTMF code back to unlock the door. In the movie, he makes a direct electrical connection to record and replay the signal. For my project, I'll be using a regular dictation machine. Not this one, because it's a bit flaky at times. Instead, I'll be using a somewhat more robust desktop model. To generate the data signal to be recorded onto the tape, I'll be using a slightly more modern computer. Both of these devices have microphone audio inputs for recording audio making a direct connection difficult without level converters. Instead, I'll be using a method that was also used with early modems, acoustic coupling. In the movie War Games, David uses an acoustic coupling modem. The connection is made by putting a microphone up to the speaker and a speaker up to the microphone. In the early days of telephone networks, the phone companies controlled what could be directly connected but acoustic coupling bypass that requirement. I'm going to use the inbuilt microphone to record the audio directly from the computer's speaker. Now I need something to record. I'll be recording at 300 board, a common data transfer speed for very early modems and early 8-bit computer storage. That means I should be able to record about 50 kilobytes or about 30 minutes onto one side of a 60 minute microcassette. As it turns out, the dialogue from the movie War Games, rendered as a text file, is 49 kilobytes. That should fit nicely onto one side of a microcassette. To generate the sound file from the data, I'm using a DOS program called KCS, or Kansas City Standard Tape Conversion Utility. Here I am encoding the 49 kilobyte text file into a WAV sound file using KCS. When playing the WAV file, you can hear the data encoded in different frequencies. Time to record this onto my microcassette. Okay, it's time to make the tape. So, let's get power to the computer. We'll get that ready and power up the micro cassette. All right, let's get going. Okay, it's queued up. I'm going to play the audio out of the speaker here directly into this microphone and put them right up against each other. I've set the volume 
output on the computer to about 40% to give a good strong signal into the microphone. So now it's just a matter of beginning the recording and pressing playback and letting it go for half an hour. Okay, so the tape actually ran out a few seconds before the audio stopped. So I may have lost a few words of dialogue right at the end. What I'm going to do is just flip the side and do yet another backup onto the other side of the tape. So let's line that up again. Play. Okay, it's finished. With only seconds to spare on the tape stopping there. Done. Okay, next to make sure that I can actually recover it, I'll do the reverse process. Just quickly check the recording. Rewind it a little bit. Sounds good. Audacity is now recording. So I'm going to position the microphone right where the speaker is. Volume is set to 4. And let's go, let's play. With that done, it's time to test how well this worked. I can import the WAV file back into KCS and use the decode function to extract the data back out of the file. When I do this, KCS reports decode errors. Fortunately, there is an ignore decode errors switch in KCS, which I can use. Since this is an experimental text file, it's more about seeing how much can be decoded. I did try a few times at different volume levels, even re-recording the tape again, until I was able to get mostly readable text decoded. This is not a bad result, considering I'm using lower fidelity microcassette and recording the signal acoustically. The experiment is done. I now have a recreated artifact of the early 1980s, a microcassette with the dialogue from war games saved acoustically as a text file.